I'm going to uh, pass the microphone to Keith Morrow um, to talk about um, how do you measure and how do you monitor quality in English language education. Keith. Uh, thank you, John, and thank you, everybody. Uh, it's a great honor and a privilege for me to be here this <coughs> evening, uh, and I feel slightly out of place because I am not even working a long time in India. This is only my second ever visit to India. Uh, so it, it is a little bit presumptuous of me to sit here and tell you, uh, or even, yes, tell you how to do things. But what I can, I don't want to do that, obviously, but what I do want to do is just to pass on to you and share with you uh, some experiences that I'm directly involved in from a UK perspective in actually administering and being involved in a quality assurance scheme. And it's entirely up to you to say how relevant or, or significant these might be in your context. But I'm a chief inspector, as John said in his introduction, for Accreditation UK, which is a quality assurance body managed by the British Council, as it happens, in the UK, which works within the sector of ELT provision. As many of you know, there are, there are schools and colleges in the UK which specifically focus on teaching English to students who come to the UK to improve and develop their English. And it's in that sector that this quality assurance scheme has been developed. So th that sector, ELT provision, is actually rather different from an English language education, which is the focus of your and our discussions this evening. But my feeling is that quality and how you measure quality is actually common across the sector that I work in and has a lot to say about more general sectors and a more general application. So on that basis, let me tell you a little bit about how we uh, assess and evaluate quality within the Accreditation UK standard, uh, uh, the Accreditation UK scheme. Essentially, the scheme is built around a set of standards. And I'll give you an example of a standard in a minute. Uh, but the standards are publicly available. Uh, they're in a handbook. And schools, whether they're members of the scheme or not, are able to look at these standards and relate them to their own work. Within the quality assurance framework, within the, the uh, Accreditation UK framework, it, the, the, a school can be accredited within this framework on the, uh, on the basis of inspection. So two inspectors will go along to a school and spend a day, sometimes two days, in the school looking at the work of the school against the standards. So the standards are at the heart of this. And our, the, the scheme, the Accreditation UK scheme, works with standards in five areas. It looks at management. It looks at the resources and the premises of a school. It looks at teaching and learning. It looks at the welfare of students, because that's very significant in, in the context in which we work, where students come to the UK specifically to study at a school, they're away from home, they're in a foreign country, their welfare is obviously very important. And we've recently introduced a specific standard now looking at the care of students under the age of 18, of whom quite a, there are quite a lot in the context where, where we work. So those are the, the five areas, and within each area there is a standard. So just by way of illustration, let me tell you the standard for teaching and learning, which is something we all have in common. The standard says that teachers will have appropriate qualifications and will be given sufficient support to ensure that their teaching meets the needs of the students. Programs of learning will be managed for the benefit of students and the teaching observed will meet the requirements of the scheme. So that's what the inspectors go into the school to evaluate and they're guided and supported in their evaluation by a set of criteria which have been developed in relation to each standard. Now, I don't, I we can't go through all the teaching and learning criteria. There are over 30 of them. But they range in, uh, 
in, form, in, in, in coverage from things which have to do with the, if you like, the administrative side of teaching and learning in a school. For instance, there will be effective procedures for the appropriate timetabling of students, teachers, courses, and classrooms. Well, that's a, that's a pretty obvious criterion. If you haven't got an effective timetable, if students don't know which room they've got to go to, teachers don't, obviously the provision is not going to be uh, very effective. But that's something that we look at. But on a slightly higher level, if you like, we look at, uh, we look at the, the arrangements for supporting teachers. There will be formalized arrangements to ensure that appropriate guidance and support for teachers is available. So we look at the arrangements for that. And more ominously, but actually not ominously at all, we look at the arrangements for supervising and monitoring teacher. There'll be effective arrangements for the observation and monitoring of teacher's performance by an academic manager. Uh, uh, well, it goes on, it's more, the, 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 the criterion is more extensive than that. But we look at areas, we go into the classroom, we observe teaching, we have criteria for what we're looking at in the classroom and how we report on that. So essentially, how does this work? The scheme works by having standards, by having criteria relating to those standards, by putting those in the public domain, and then sending in inspectors with the brief of matching what they see in the school against the standards that are laid down. And obviously we can explore this and discuss this more later if people are interested in more about how it works. But for the moment, thank you very much indeed. Just remind us though, Keith, you started near the beginning, there were five or now six different areas. There were f there were, okay, and, and what are those f four? Remind us what the four were. The four are management, the management of the school, yeah. the premises and resources that are available in the school, the teaching and learning of the school, and the welfare provision for the school. Yes. And okay. the one that we've just added is a specific welfare provision for under 18 okay. students. Okay, which is a, a big issue, certainly big in the issue UK, in, in the political context of the yeah. UK.